So I grew up going to Bronx Underground, um, which a few of us here actually met and attended to as well. Um, it was an experience that kind of shaped my future in a way, where I was thrown into this whole world of live music, seeing my friends on stage, um, the energy of the crowd, and it's just something I, I fell in love with, live music. Um, and in that, I kind of knew at that point I wanted to make my career in music, um, whether it was as a performer or as you know, somebody in business, it didn't matter to me, as long as I was in that world. Yeah. Um, and uh, it wasn't until college where I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I said, why am I going to wait? You know, I'll just, I'll just do it now. Yeah. I, have, I have friends, you know, who, yeah. who performed. You know, I have people who wanted to go to shows. And I did my first show at a place called Scott Place Cafe, um, a couple blocks up from me, actually, yeah. on East Tremont. And um, that was kind of the start of it all. Yeah. So wow. this was Scott Place Cafe, first ever TFAC show. Yeah, so, I mean, go, going into all of this, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I knew, yeah. like, you know, okay, we have to have artists perform and people yeah. are going to show up. And that's just kind of, that's where my head was like. Um, and, you know, I spoke to the owners of the cafe who were, who were really cool, really cool about it. And it was essentially their grand opening. So, you know, it was a win-win for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. I got experience. They got business in. And um, we actually had, uh, we had one for tomorrow. Actually, so oh my God. Which, <laughs> Kevin, uh, which Kevin was the drummer of um, back then with with Durie and, um, and Adrian. Adrian, yeah. yeah, Adrian on guitar. Jesus, you could just see how how old it is just by the film quality, like exactly. whatever you're filming on a phone or like a camera. It's just the quality is priceless. Yeah, it's pixelated. It's insane. Who we'll filmed anyway? Was that I, I did. The, oh. <laughs> this is this is when I, I was doing all the photography and all the video, yeah. and um, you know it was really just an eye-opening experience uh -huh. of seeing everyone come into this this cafe. Their eyes are glued on the performers, and you know people are laughing, people are, are singing along, and I'm in the background because you know I never like to be like in front. I always like to just see what's mm. happening, and everyone's having a great time, and it's like, wow, like I, I like I put this together, like like I did this, you know, and. And working with, you know, a bunch of my friends at the time, you know, Brian was a big part of this as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kevin got involved, Dylan, like Lonnie, every, like we all got together to help make this happen. But it was, it was really something. How old were you guys when that video was out? I must have been like 17, 18. Was that 2011? Yeah. Because yeah. I was booking shows 18. that I couldn't go to because I was underage. Yeah. yeah, that's when like Brian had to step in and like like handle the shows. That's for hysterical. Me. You were booking at places that you couldn't, I couldn't even be. I couldn't go to. That's hot. Well, I think mo most of my friends at the time were either music lovers of like the local Bronx scene or um, performers themselves, artists themselves, who kind of had more experience than I did, you know, at the time and how shows worked and how like local shows worked. Um, but it was really, it was really something to work with all these people that were in the community who came from the same background and had the same experiences as you did with Bronx Underground, with all the local communities. And it's just, it's something I wanted to keep going and that like I still have going. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked with everyone here, you know, yeah. it, it's just how I prefer to do things, you know, yeah. similar backgrounds lead to successful endeavors in the future. Right. So right. that's something I'm proud of. Um, so I, I met Dylan, um, I want to say like 2011, yeah, 2012, somewhere around 2012. Like and um, he actually was running his own promotions company. It was Last End Promotions. Last End Promotions. Um, we met through Brian Dure as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think I met Kevin um, at the first show. Yeah, you, you, he was he, at the first show. I saw that video. He too. was actually the first person <laughs> to show up to the cafe. See? And nice. he was like, yeah, my I'm name sure. is Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> the last one today to show up. Yeah. They said, well, they, well, what was the time? It was like seven o'clock at eight o'clock yeah. to come in? And, yeah, so, I didn't know that was a thing to be late to a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a thing. Yeah, apparently if you're playing stress. a show, you have to show up like at least 20 minutes late. Yeah, and come up with some sort of excuse. Yeah, uh, Lonnie, then, I actually I don't remember when we met. We've known um, each other for so long. I remember Dylan and Brian told me about a show that needed a uh, that there was Performer. a free slot and mm -hmm. it was your show. It was a Scott's Place uh, I show. I think it was your third. I think it was your third show there. I I, I recall it was about January two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. Wow. Yeah, and we, we we've been friends, you know, ever since. since. Uh, 
10 years. Um, and then Chris came along around um, 2015. The latest one. I was, yeah. the, I was the last one. No, no. well, Jack's, Jack's the, the last, last one. one. <laughs> 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 I keep thinking, yeah. Better late than never. <laughs> Chris came on. Um, yeah. um, he, we actually met at Arlene's Grocery. I met at Arlene's Grocery uh, with, with you because I booked all your summer on that All show. your summer, yeah. And for me, that was the first show that I ever went to like that. I, I never had any type of experience when it comes to a local show with local musicians and mm -hmm. local people. Like for me, a concert was, you know, the big guns, arenas, four hundred dollars stadiums. Tickets. Yeah. You know, I, I never really had any of that. And I think what what blew me away with that first show was just seeing the camaraderie of everybody yeah. and just seeing how much talent there was on the yeah. local level. I thought it was interesting all these musicians that were just new no names, well, with all the respect. Yeah. And everyone was like, wow, that went crazy for me. Like they were icons. Yeah, they were icons. And then yeah. like we just Which they were. And like, they were. To, to a lot of us. Yeah. We we hit it off because we were just like minded in our music, mm -hmm. in our the way we looked at business, the way we looked at um, entrepreneurship, school as well. You know, I was doing PR randomly at the time, like just randomly. Cause I I, I started I was in grad school that January for public relations and I was doing public relations for an artist like the, you know, the balls on me was saying, you know, just gonna, <laughs> we just start doing artist PR and shit you know, I just like, but, into but it, it. Yeah. it worked and I think because I wanted to do marketing and the why why it was all your song why it was music was because I worked with Miguel at the time at Texas in Brazil at that gotcha. time and so that's when that worked out for me and you know lo and behold it comes out like that and then I was an intern for him that that's I was the yeah. intern. So uh, I was the intern. So I was the intern. Coffee and shit. The the latest addition to the team is actually Miss Jack Stell, the rec right here. How you doing? Who came in around 2018, right yeah. when we first met? Mm. When 2017, 2018. Yeah. When the underground, when we were talking about bringing the underground back and you know putting shows back at FLC and getting that whole thing back together. Um, is where I met you, and I, I remember the first time I saw you, I was like, "Wow, that, that's that's a wild chick right there!" Like, oh my god! Shit. Oh yeah! <laughs> I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Uh, yeah. Mike from um, Drew Torres Trio called me up and was like, "We need somebody to like run either sound or backstage or booking. I don't know. We just we need somebody, and you know, you're really seasoned. Can you help us out?" I had never been involved with the Bronx Underground. We were doing other things, uh, my band and I, in other states and other places, and. I remember I ran into you because you were basically like promoting and doing the money and you weren't in charge of it. Mm -hmm. Mike was in charge of it. Yeah. And the way things were going, Mike was kind of in and out of stuff. So in order for me to get to know like the process, I went to you because it, it, you just like somebody who took over, you know what I mean? And you had mm -hmm. that like beacon of, all right, this is how it's going to go. And if we don't have a leader, I'm going to step up. So I was like, let me get to know this guy. And, you know, we hit it off immediately. Immediately. Like, yeah. We got tattoos. We got tattoos we, together. We now. went crazy. It was it was an amazing I was experience. Like, oh, I, I had yeah. a spot. Yeah, he was the third one out of TFAC to get his tattoo. But we went we hit it off because I have a lot of connections in different places and bands and you know, just boots on the ground status and he does more executive stuff and so yeah. do you like yeah. promotion and I'm not really familiar with that stuff. So we all had something to share with each That's other. That's funny because I looked at you as that type of executive. Because really? you, you had you had more longevity. Oh yeah. And when we did then, in, yeah, then both in, of us. in the show. And then when yeah. you told me about California, you told yeah. me about how much you've done. Well, that's a team effort. Yeah. That's a, that my whole band does that. So mm -hmm. one gets the hotel, the other one gets the booking, the other one, you know, like somebody networks to get yeah. wherever. Yeah. So for me personally, I had never done what you guys were dealing with money. Like my bass player does that. Like mm -hmm. dealing with with networking, my drummer does that. Like so I'm just the face. So now it's like, well, I know 150 bands, like right off the bat. So do you need bands? Mm -hmm. Do you need sound? Do you need yeah. audio engineering? And right. I feel like right. it it I'm glad you guys asked me to join. Absolutely. I'm I'm really yeah. excited. Yeah. Rep the stuff, you know. It's, it's yeah. awesome. I feel like it's it's like you know it's like it's like Kevin and it's like Dylan. It was just a natural choice. Yeah. Like, there was there was nobody else I wanted to be doing this with. Passion. It's crazy. Like he still looks the same. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That man. Look at that baby face. Look at that baby face. That's crazy. Oh. That's one of my best friends right I there. I don't recognize that guy. I do. Got the fresh cut. <laughs> there he is. Oh, there he is. Uh, <laughs> Fernando with the is so monster, wild. The monster. See you without oh, the tattoos. That was a nice break. Yeah. No tattoos. Wild man. 
It's like I don't, I don't do recognize that. him. I don't do yeah. tattoos. I can't believe yeah. such a young face yeah, made such an impact. So many, like all that stuff is like wild for me to think about. Look at how young you were and you were making these moves, man. Damn, son. Sean. Sean. Oh, Sean, always, <laughs> Sean always has his eyes closed during a photo. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, Sean Dowling. <laughs> wow, it's him every man. day. Yeah, it was some, and, and again, you know, I've always said I just wanted to do. No. We wanted to be active. Yeah. All of us, all of us, took yeah. the choice. Yeah. Like the choice was there was no choice. We had to be active. Yeah, yeah. And we, we had to. <laughs> like minds came together and made some magic happen yeah. through years yeah. now of you know progress. Yeah, we've we've got a really good brand going. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, Chris and I talked last night that come December of this year, it's going to be yeah. 10 years. That's awesome. Of the, of, of the Fox and King. 10 years. And it's like, I look back and it's just, it's like this. Like, I still I feel remember. Like such a newbie. I feel like, like, <laughs> I feel so new. like, um, It's incredible. Um, but to, to go back to your question, um, I would say I would have to go back to like 2013. And that's when I started feeling really ballsy. Um, and I like I, I felt like on top of the world. Like, oh, I did three shows. I could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking on Yankee Stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, everything was kind of on Craigslist at the time, and I was looking oh for God, venues. Oh my God, Craigslist! I was looking for venues. We found um, Candice Lee Camacho on Craigslist. You know, for her first oh, show you? ever. Yeah. Wow. Found, okay. Her first show. I found Ooh, her on Craigslist, and um, I found this Brooklyn spot. Um, I think it was called Broomies. I don't think it's there anymore. And I got a show there on a Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, no, Saturday afternoon in bed and I booked a metal show. Good luck. So <laughs> naturally, luck. it was the worst show ever. Yeah. <laughs> naturally. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the windows were shaking because of how loud everything was. Right. Only three people came to the show. Oh, um, it was just the bands there. And to me, I'm running around. Oh, what do you need? What do you need? What can I do for you? I'm, I'm talking to the bartender. What can I do? And she was ready to kick us out because it was just terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> Um, and at the end of the show, you know, we're talking about the money or I'm talking to the bartender and she's like, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to go into the industry? And I was like, yes, you know, yes, I do. And she was like, bet I got you. Give me your number. And I get a call from her the next day. Wow. I get a call from her the next day. It turns out she ran, she runs her own booking and management company. And I became an intern for her. She became my first mentor. What was the name of the business? Um, it was uh, Felicia Cruz. Okay. Yeah, oh, Felicia yeah, Cruz. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kathleen. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah and with that internship, I worked South by Southwest, Warp Tour, CMJ Music Festival. Um, I got flown out to Tennessee to work shows there. The worst show ever became my biggest Mantra. push. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's and I say this often because yeah. it's how you handle the situation mm -hmm. and how you move throughout the the space. You never know who's watching. What did you learn from Warp Tour and South by Southwest for booking shows? It, it was it was incredible. Um, it, I, I had never done so. This was actually my first yeah. experience apart from local live music. Mm -hmm. um, everything you know here is, is is like in a basement or like you know in, in somebody's house. It, it's small scale, and once you expand it to like a mass festival like Warp Tour everything just becomes clearer to you. Had you ever been to Warp Tour or South by Southwest prior to working for it? Yeah, I had yeah. gone I had gone twice for Warp Tour um, before I started working it, but my first experience with South by was was the first. Yeah. Um, it was an experience that, you know, I was still in college. I think I was in my junior year of college and I actually had to talk to my professors and say, listen, I'm going to be away for two weeks. Can I do my work in advance or can I do it on the road? And some of them took some convincing but mm -hmm. I remember um, being in Austin for South by, I was a stage manager for, for Spider House. And, you know, they had like Kosha Dills, Sh uh, Shinobu Ninja, mm -hmm. um, Kapali Long, that's where we met uh, him. Yeah. And, you know, we would load up the venue at like 5 a.m. We'd go oh. all the way up until 1 a.m. Yep. And then after that, I'd be doing papers in the tour bus. Ooh. And like submitting my, my papers and all that, doing my research papers. <laughs> but it's like... That was the hustle, you know, like, like that, that was the grind. So around uh, 2015, 2016, yeah. this is when we tried to expand. And I, exactly. I, you remember uh, Kapali, who I met, oh, yeah. I met him at South By. And I was like, Amazing. you've never been to the East Coast, never been to New York, let's bring you out. Right. And uh, this is Kevin's own baby right here. Yeah, because Kevin did the doc, the, 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 yeah. the visual aesthetics of the entire thing. I'm yep. surprised he even asked me to. 
just yeah. go with him. To PA. To PA. To uh, it was a blues chest. It was a blues, blues festival. festival. They, I think uh, in Lancaster. Yeah, yeah Lancaster, yeah. Lancaster Music Festival. Yeah, and then. Oh my god, he looks so West yeah, Coast, like in. laid back, fucking awesome. Like you, I you picked him up from the airport. Yeah, I, I picked him up from the, the airport. Train over we there. went through the train. <laughs> I took him to his house, wherever he was staying in Brooklyn. Um, he had zero experience with New York. Wow. And it was like we booked him on six shows within mm. a week and a half. Arlene's pianos. Mm -hmm. um rockwood was another one yep. and then some open mics the yep. lesson as well yeah. right. and it was his first exposure to like the new york music scene yeah um to me i've known i've known this guy for a long time now and it was just such an honor to help bring him yeah. here and introduce him right. to everything and then we filmed right in i think it was his friend's um living room and um, I remember that it was his friend or was his cousin? Was, no, no, no. Yeah. It, was a, it was just a friend. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a friend. friend. And then I remember when we were doing the music video, it was really exciting. It was, it was my first ever music video. It was a documentary. It was my first ever, like, film shoot yeah. that yeah. I ever did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it was interesting because, like, it was on schedule. The whole, I remember Nando at one time, I was uh, hungry, right? I, was, I, I, I didn't eat breakfast. I wanted something to eat. Nando oh, goes, this man. And it was, what are we? What are you gonna do if we're on tour? Like you can't eat. You can't eat. You gotta. You, we have to do this first, and then you go fucking eat. I'm like, <laughs> so it was funny in the scene that we were in the middle of Bushwick. I was, yeah. like, it was on a. It was Saturday or Sunday. Saturday. It was a Saturday. Saturday. We go woke up early. I drove all the way on bedside. We picked them all up, and then we went to uh, Nickelback Avenue. Yes. We went around the whole um, the train tracks. Yep. Yeah. And then we went to uh, the Williamsburg. Uh, river area by, by the East River. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really a fun time. And it came out beautifully. It really did. Yeah. Like, Kevin, you did an awesome yeah. job. When, yeah. like, now when the brand in. is beginning to um, come to fruition, it's beginning to grow, right. right? We all were there. Like, you know, the media that Kevin was doing was incredible with the photography and the, the video. The featurettes that you were doing for the shows. Yeah, like, we saw that featurette <laughs> with, um, at left field, right? At left field, yeah. It was a, yeah. it was a lot of like trying to figure out what my craft was and how to best um, help. You know, that's mostly what it was. It was like I was trying to like trying to do it, trying to figure it out, and then see how it can benefit us at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And apparently, you guys liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it works. It works. <laughs> and, and like, I feel like you yourself are your own like worst crit critic yeah and that's when i'm like ah it could be better i could have done this i could have done that and then it got me thinking like multiple ways yeah. uh, how to best like utilize my skills with the equipment that i have to mm -hmm. and i don't know from there it just kept going and growing and you guys kept liking it and i'm like all right so i guess i'm <laughs> doing something pretty cool as tfac progressed um and especially with jackson the picture yeah we really kind of expanded to we, we expanded with, with our reach and we had this one show um, we call what did we call it? We call it uh, Bronx Basement Riot. Yeah, the Bronx, Bronx Basement, Basement Riot. Riot. And this we, was my baby. This, this was th this crazy. was Jax's baby. Yeah, and we actually had a headliner from the UK. Hey. That was a really interesting story because we're on a record label, and my record label reached out to me because we have a really close relationship, um, the guys and I, and they were like, "This band from the UK hit us up, but we don't have any spots that we can host them. What can you do?" Is there anything you could do or pass them? So I started, you know, emailing some random dude from the UK and mm -hmm. they ended up getting back to me like a week later. And I'm like, guys, you're running out of time here. So yeah. within a week, I was like, Fernando, what do we do? Like the Fox and King left in the attic. Like we all the, the, the we knuckle down. Bar. Yeah, we, we, bar we were drinking beers this. and I was like, we need, we have a, a crunch right now. This is a great opportunity to show them in, in, you know, on the other side of the pond, like what we do here yeah. and get connections. He's like, what about my basement? So we'll do it in the basement. So I put on this insane <laughs> show. We had we did that the here. Bronx. We had um, New Jersey. We had um, Boston, Massachusetts, or, or the likes, and the UK mm -hmm. all converge in the in the Bronx in a basement. And I was doing sound. It was lit. The place that yeah. you see was was packed. It was packed. We, even I couldn't outside. even. We, could, we even had a merch table. Like we made a venue mm -hmm. overnight within like four days. Yeah. These guys rolled up in a van which was like a tour experience for them. We had the tour them. bus yeah. right in front. They brought people from like Maryland and Virginia. Like people were following them because they were so on fire that people drove with them to their next spot. And yeah. they told us that this was the best venue 
that they played from Florida all the way up. It was their last Amazing. night in, in the U.S. In the it US. was their last show. Yeah. I think they crashed on your couch, didn't they? I looked for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, this was an insane show. I thought I thought he was nuts. Like told me about it. Like, yeah, I'm opening up my basement, and I'm like, we're doing shows oh, yeah. now. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's my that's my category, though. That's what I do. I put on basement no, shows for like yeah, years. I've been doing like the rabbit hole I did, minute. like yeah, in the that's last the minute. That's the last minute, and, yep. and then um, and then he goes, yeah, this is like the best show we've ever had. Yep. And I, I'm like, and that's what I was, I was like, yeah, like that's it. sometimes it, bigger isn't better. Sometimes they went to the UK intimate. too, saying that yeah. they they were like, check out the Fox and King, check out the following artists we played with. Anybody in the UK, like they posted all over the internet, like yeah. on their social media, like go contact Jax, go contact the Fox and King, go contact Bronx, these New people York, that'll US. help us, you know, get over yeah. the pond. Yeah. And I was in shock. But you've had your downtime as well. Uh, and there were dark periods in TFAC where yeah. you had your ups and downs and that 17 period, whatever you want to share. It's yeah, I mean, you, and, and like, this is this is where um, you know eventually I want to I want to turn it to you because yeah, once 2016 2017 came, uh, the school and actually uh, Dylan was part of this as well. We were both working for IAR right for the institute, yeah. and one day you know we go into work, and then an hour later we got called up to a meeting. The owners came in and they said we're shutting down the school mm -hmm. after wow like 34 35 years. It was a while. Yeah, it's it was the oldest audio school in New York, um, or I think in the world. I think it was the world. The yeah. World. And the owners eventually said, "This isn't making money. You guys, you guys have to go." Oh, and it was just like that. It was, it was just like that. It's like a five minute meeting. It's a five minute meeting. If that. Yeah, we're closing it down. You guys can leave. Uh, Get, the the fuck out of Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That's messed up, bro. It's like, do me a favor. Can you grab your stuff and just uh, yeah. get outside that, for that's me? If you could take some trash on the way out, that'd be cool. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, that that kind cool. of uh, set me down a, a, a spiral of you know, depression. And um, I was unemployed for a good year and a half. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. And obviously, you know, the Fox and King suffered. Um, because usually yeah. I was funding, you know, events and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And without a job, I kind of lost that ability. And then I lost my steam. And then I kind of lost my will to, like, do this. And um, I remember talking to you one day and I was like, Chris, I don't know if I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like, I don't like I really don't I, know. Like, I'm not here. I don't know if I want to do this. I've been doing this for, you know, five, six years. I haven't gotten anywhere. Like, I'm done. And I remember hearing a long pause from you and you were like, take it easy, you know, mm -hmm. take some time, give me a call. I, I'll, I'll never forget yeah. that, that phone call because I was just done, you know, and I wasn't working. I felt, I felt like, like I had failed. And it's like after six mm -hmm. years of my life doing this to nothing, it's like mm -hmm. I wasted my life doing this. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was, it felt, it felt terrible. You know, it, it, it felt terrible. And, um, horror stories and everything. So moving moving a little forward, you know, we, we took more leaps. We, you know, we took advantage of more opportunities and eventually we landed at B-Sides. But um, I, you, Chris, you want to let them know how, how B-Sides started? B-Sides. Which is a cool story. The, oh, well, the thing with the B-Sides was that, well, as you know, the pandemic hit. And like we had like four shows lined up here. At the Fox one. At the Fox Banger. So Banger just, shows. Just oh. um, leaping off of what we what we did with Bronx Riot Basement Fest. Uh, and then I guess it was really like, we felt really, I, we were really messed up with that. Because like, I think at that time, just there were so many emotions going on yeah. and so much, just people worried about everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and calling I, and canceling. I remember we had, we had a cancellation on, on the social media blitz. Yeah. And we did the whole infographics and all that, and then like it was like, then it was like, so how how are we gonna like really pull this together? Because like yep. we don't have any shows, there's no music anymore. Let let's bring something for the musicians that first that we lost. That That's we the lost. thing. We, we all we reached out to those artists that were on our, on the bill. Mm -hmm. We reached out to them first, and then hey, like we're gonna see if you want to get on our Instagram TV, right. perform for an hour, get your fans invite have your the show, link, have the know. quote unquote show, and then. You know, it, it will vibe out. First two shows were great, and it it, got, it caught a lane. So, like, three, six shows in, 
by like April, May, we did about 20 we, we or did, so. We did 20 of them. Night sessions? Night yeah, sessions. Yeah, night sessions. We night did. Sessions. Yeah. yeah, and from it, the it, artist's it perspective, huge. you're stuck at home and you have 50 and people watching you, sending you from, hearts. Exactly. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. Like, interacting. They were like, play this song. We love you. Yeah. We can't yeah. wait to see you live. Like, that was an uplifting as an yeah. artist. That was so yeah. uplifting. Like, that, you provided such a good vibe. Especially then when people were a lot closer mm -hmm. than, than they were later on that year. People were more understanding, more appreciative right. of the little things. Right. Yeah. And I think we played a huge role in the community. And it really went regional because Kapali was, he also did it. He did, Kapali it, was yeah. he did it from his house in California. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. He, like the time him. difference was all, it was great seeing the sunset, the back like I smoking weed. And it's just <laughs> like, <laughs> back to like just vibing out. Yeah. And, and then it got, you know, it got serious and also with the, you know, with with the with the riots back then or the like BLM, yeah, it was a, it was a really on there. crazy. It got a little time. political. Also, it went yeah. away from music. It really it, it really stretched out. So by June, I figured we had enough kind of like content to really say, you know, what, let's try and get some media feature. There, this is a story. Yeah, this is, it, it grew into a real pandemic story. So we started to be uh, Bronx that, and um, you know, just say, hey, you know, do you want just coverage, just regular coverage? Uh, of the show, yeah. So then Bernardo responded to my email, said, "Hey, well, you know, why don't you guys make this into something more, more. tangible?" Yeah. And we're saying, you know, basically like, eh, well, if you do it into a TV show, maybe after the pandemic, it'll, it'll you know, grow. You, it'll, it'll it'll grow. There, yeah. We were like, "Oh, what the fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> that phone call I, gave I was guess, like, That's not what I. I guess for. we'll yeah. do that, but I mean, it was a and then they'll say, "Oh, then oh, we'll put it. Then you guys could put it on our program in, on prime time slot." I'm like, what? Yep. Like, what they, like literally, the guys are me a TV show at night. Ugh. And the, okay, well now we got to find a video guy. We got to find now the all artist. This stuff. We Shout out to Romeo Magathic. Yeah, Magathic yeah. did a great job. Yeah. Well, our first videographer, he did an awesome job. You know, yeah. uh, at first he filled in at the right time. Um, despite, you know, the little kinks, whatever. But I remember when we did this, you know, we had this no is our idea first, what we were doing. Our first, <laughs> remember, because Ken was, what, was with us. That's right. Should have been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't. Life but happens, man. Life. Yeah. It does. It's all good. No, we love you, brother. Yeah. But the, the point is that we literally were doing this cold turkey. So, like, we had all aesthetic. We planned everything. Like, we did all this. We, we say, oh, let's start up at, at Nando's house. Um, you know, Sergio will follow From us there. down in the basement. Yeah. Whatever. Look at me. I'm fucking fat. You know, like they, <laughs> we're rolling up uh, and shit, and we're just literally just talking. And then we met up with Alex Bondarev, who's the lead singer of the Curse with Oceans. Yeah. Um, also the singer of Bongo Jimmy Morris, Ryan's. So went to Jimmy Ryan's. Um, you know, it was an excellent place. It, it was like, this is really, what I liked about this, this episode was because it was in the moment in the pandemic. Like, we had to be outside. Mm -hmm. Well, the audio was shitty because the Bronx is the Bronx, you know, all the fucking traffic and all the people, all the, all the, all the noises and the sirens. <laughs> We were crazy. I'm drinking beers. We're vibing it out. Yep. We had a good time. And, you know, it, it went well. And then, like, first, the first show where we aired on, on BronxNet, it, you know, it was just, it was just it was surreal. It was and surreal. Then, I remember you, you, you sent a, a photo of the, the info on, uh, on the cable box. Yes. That said yeah. these <laughs> facts, B sides. And it had like, Fernando Michael and Christopher Vasquez. Talk discussing Alex Bonner. I was like, holy shit. It's, it's, it's real. real. Like, shit. it's real now. <laughs> That's when I realized we're onto something <laughs> big. And then this was filmed in August of 2020. And then we didn't get to the second episode. And that's when our beautiful, famous director, right there. Man, you can yep. on me if you want. You know, <laughs> right there. There he is. There he is. Yeah. There Shout is. out to Romeo. Mr. Thank Romeo you. Himself. Yeah. And Matt Gothic changed Matt the whole, Gothic. Changed the yep. whole aesthetic. Of the entire show. That's right. From from the production quality, the audio quality, you name it, it, it really ended up going legs. And Man. we had Drew, we had uh, Brian Durier in two parts. Yep. We had our beautiful Jack Stilrek. And then we wrapped it up with a little hip hop at Advice. Advice was That's so right. good. And um, Ugh, I can't wait to book him. You know, it, it was really special. Uh, what was your favorite moments on uh, on B says Nando? Oh man, uh, I think you know now that we're here, I would have to say hanging out with Drew at the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that was a great time. Oh jeez, yeah. man! Um, 
So we, we had initially gone there to do like a, like a beer tasting, right? We were mm-hmm. going to talk about craft beer and, and talk about music and all that stuff. And we had a good 15 beers oh, on the table. We were so lifted. Oh. <laughs> and we're tasting, we're ta- and eventually our words start up. getting a little slurred. Yo, it and was then, so like, bad. And we had that entire segment. But I feel like in that moment, you know, we were all connecting, talking about things that we all love. Like we all love craft beer. We all love, we all love that stuff. And we're also talking about the music scene and the Bronx and how the Bronx mm-hmm. is like going through this change and all that and what that means to all of us individually. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that was a really good time for me. I really liked that episode as well. Um, you know, just hanging out with Drew, getting to see him through the pandemic. That was the other thing too that we did as a group. Um, you know, we brought together people that hadn't been out of their house or that were afraid to be at a brewery at that point. And right. they came a little, you know, um, reserved and then yeah. they broke out into this feels good this feels all right let's have a couple of beers mm-hmm. and like we captured that moment romeo captured that moment on film like really well. breaking out of the pandemic yeah. and it's okay to, to have to crush a couple of beers with your boys you know what i mean yeah look at Which this is, <laughs> a lot of beers yeah. i know <laughs> so, so so just so full third wall here the, the whole point of this was we wanted to do a little beer tasting that kind of went wrong <laughs> we, we, we didn't plan that right I, I had i had like food network vibes and me like oh is that what you're gonna do so what's this beer taste like you know oh, God. so true story oh i like ipas i like this let's taste this let's try this together and we were open it and Roman didn't even didn't even film it because it was all over the place but uh behind the scenes we were cracking open the beer because oh, yeah. we were pouring the beer yeah. and we were trying it each one by the time we had gotten to this scene we were all so lifted i, I don't even shocked. know what i said i was like i used to hang out at Cotola. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, look at me. So I didn't ask any questions. I'm like, this was like hanging out with your boys on the corner, like, yo, remember yeah, the day? Much. Like, yeah. it was. It got messy, but I loved it. Yeah. It was what, so authentic. What, what I loved about this, and and I, I think this portion of this episode really set the precedent and tone for the next couple of episodes. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because Drew really opened up to us here. And, you know, talk about his, his depression, you know, his, his yeah. negative thoughts that he grew yeah. up with. It got real. It got, it got real. You know, we all got very emotional at this point in, yep. in the episode. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of really put a light, you know, on both the Bronx, the people of the Bronx, what we go through day to day. But more importantly, we all know Drew as an icon, as a rock star. But this is Drew, the person. Yep. Yeah. And I feel like it's rare to get those moments in general, just in life, yeah. you know, to really know somebody and we got to know him here, mm-hmm. which I thought was very important. Uh, I remember at the end of the segment, like us hugging each other and, and the camaraderie that each of us felt yeah. like we're like really good friends, like yeah. really people yeah. that really care about each other, Yeah, that it's deeper. And even then for me, is like, you didn't really, I don't even for me didn't even realize like how 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 um how thankful he was that I was there we were there yeah. and those hugs that that moment that we embraced yeah. they were really emotional for me and you're right I think it for me it was like something's being told here we're on to something yeah. yeah and people are gonna start hearing these stories reading the stories of, of the artists that we're profiling and it's a lot deeper than the music it's deeper yeah. than than you know what yeah. we do in the shows it's it's yeah you're right it's, it's not just music it's yeah. it's exposure to any sort of obstacle in in life and not just not just music and uh creating friendships like i i've i've noticed one one particular thing about any music scene or music circle within the Bronx. It's not just about playing the music. It's about creating friendships and getting through things together. Yeah. A lot of people that I know, including myself, we didn't just go for the music. We went to find a place that felt a little closer to home or something a little more comparable to home because we didn't have the most ideal circumstance. That's right. We weren't Agreed. comfortable yeah. around the people that we grew up around or yeah. had to be around or forced upon. And luckily enough, I feel like 
a lot of us have found those people. We we found that space. Yeah. I, I think, um, and th this is why I have, you know, obviously I've worked on TFAC, you know, for, for almost 10 years, but there's a side of it that's very emotional for me because, I mean, as you guys know, I like, I, I didn't grow up in the best circumstance. You know, I grew up in, in uh, an abusive household. You know, it wasn't a happy home. You know, my mother and grandmother really tried to do as much for me as they, they ever could. And I always felt like the outlier, you know, and growing up and really trying to find who I am as a person and trying to find a happy home outside of my home, I found this community. And you make mm. such an impact and on it's us like, all. It's like, you know, I can't, I can't let this go because to me, this is y'all. Like, and yeah. it's just, it gets to me sometimes when I feel like I'm failing or I'm not doing enough. Cause it's like, we it comes from you. a deeper place. We won't let you, know? you, we're here to hold you up. It comes from a deeper place. And the like, it's, it was something, it was really, really something. The best thing about it is that, you know, when you're used to like, as far as levels go, when, when you're used to like just being here yeah, and that's, that's like a standard if anything mm -hmm. um and then you get here it feels way higher yeah it's like you're past the ceiling yeah mm -hmm. you know it's it's amazing it's a phenomenal feeling that, that's what i, I told because chris asked me last night like how did you feel at the first show and i was like i mm -hmm. i feel like i can't get i can't go any higher like this is it time, man. like th this is it <laughs> but you know i'm just i'm just happy to have all of you guys and you know to continue making memories together that's what that's it's all what about it is. It's, it's making memories. memories. Really cool. Did you have a, a favorite yeah. part of the of B sides? You know, aside from your episode, or do you oh, want yeah, to go about to your episode? episode. <laughs> about your episode. I have her, no idea what episode. I was talking about. My favorite episode was the one that I was on. <laughs> <laughs> this this was it actually wasn't. a really fun one for me. Dude, I, yeah, I enjoyed this. Yeah, this was fun because you're just such a versatile individual. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Polarizing figure. Thank you. <laughs> but beautiful and strong at the same time. And yeah. I, it was really nice getting to know you and your story and your band story too. Because I, I think, I, I think we said on the episode that you're, you're not the typical Bronx, Bronx artist. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot slightly. of, there's a lot of things about what your band is and, and who you are that, that, are just so different. The views are different. People might not necessarily agree with you all the time, but at the end of the day, you're a strong person and you're a good person at heart. Right. And you showed you. both. You showed your true colors in this episode, and I really think this was the most authentic, most raw. It was very. It was. I think for me, the most raw of all. Thank you. That's because crazy. You know, that's why you shouldn't have changed the intro. <laughs> <laughs> we um. Yeah. We had no idea what we were going into because this. Yeah, yeah this was yeah. a real series about like the authentic version of who left in the attic really is mm -hmm. you know and we walked into it kind of like we're just gonna crush a couple beers and you know hang out and it ended up being more like intimate than i expected and mm -hmm. being so close to the two of you guys as an artist and and as a business partner it was easy for me to open up where i might not have if somebody random from vice were to be interviewing me right. i might have been a little bit more reserved but i felt this um this ease this comfort this just do you and you know the yeah. best part is of course you know you can edit it <laughs> you know because like, I, i'm definitely one of those people that went off the cuff yeah. and was like oh cut that i'm gonna, I'm gonna hear that but yeah. for me this episode was awesome because you no. get to see something that is kind of rare in the bronx like there is backyard you know, footage, yeah. there is a fire pit there. It, the Bronx sure. is not all buildings and burned out stuff. I wanted to bring this home life mm -hmm. that I, I was very fortunate to be able to film at my father's, you know, place where my studio is. Thank God for him. I mean, he, give, he gives us the voice. Yeah. He gives us the, the place. And I wanted people to see and understand that we have backyards mm -hmm. and the Bronx is very open, welcome and friendly. And, you know, we don't judge on the color of skin or the, the context of what your beliefs are, your political affiliations. We are all just a family who right. can come That's and true. hang out, you know, in a Bronx backyard or a basement and come together and really show love and show, we could talk politics. We could talk other bands. We can mm -hmm. book people. We can get along with somebody from Ohio. We, that was really, it's important you know, to know that. Yeah. Like the yeah. UK came and they felt welcome. And we wanted to show that 
we are a very seasoned band and there are others just like us, but we're very seasoned in the, in the stance that we don't flaunt it. And that was something that was really yeah. important about this episode. Like here we are on a couch, like a burned out little garage. You know what I mean? Like we, we have plenty of connections in the yeah. industry, but we don't flaunt it because we'd rather hold things dear. And like, yeah, to me, it was, it was right. a really raw, you're right. It was very raw yeah. and it was very upfront. But that's what makes this, that's what makes the show great is that there is no script. Right. There is no one, you know, behind the camera saying, yo, cut, don't say that. Or right. Right. cut, you know, maybe say this differently. It's just straight up, how do you feel? And what this show does, as you said, it paints the Bronx in a different picture. It right. showcases the talent. It showcases mm. the drive. Yeah. It showcases just being who you are. And it sort of takes the perception that the Bronx is just this dirty untalented no poor place yeah. when I, I you know i grew up in, in burnside avenue and i grew up in the bronx and it was just surreal to me to meet so many different people yeah who had just so many ambitious ambitions um so much drive and was just just had big dreams and were actively working on it mm -hmm. but when you look at us you know in film and even certain music videos everything is just run down buildings and the just, Bronx is not like that. Just, right. No, you know. And yeah, the other thing too, like which was all. cool, was we got to show our actual studio. We're like kind of very secretive. Like we yeah, have a real are, yeah, recording yeah. studio. We don't publicize it. We don't tell people to come record with us. Like we've put twenty plus years into that. All those street signs, all that decor that you see, was yeah. authentic moments in our career. Like right. let's put in, you know, a sign. Let's put in, and you you get to see who we really are on a different level. And I feel like B-Sides does that for the artists, like yeah. advice. One of my favorite episodes, I mean, I loved everybody on there and I have very good relationships. Advice was somebody I didn't know as like TFAC or as Left in the Attic. It was completely and safe us. Yeah. It was yeah, yeah. really interesting to see him, especially the music video cuts of like him in his room doing push-offs and like, you see the drive that the Bronx it, has. It, it, it like fits all that across authenticity. The yeah, you know, like, like he was very, um, I mean, I, I think if you were to tell, if you were to go out of state mm -hmm. and you say, ask someone, what's, what is the, how do you picture the Bronx? And you see advice. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what the Bronx is. It is, it's, it's, it's one people that are just trying to be out there working, the true grit, hustle, surviving. We all go through our, our issues at home, mm -hmm. but yet we, we, we use channels to help us persevere. Yeah. And I think that's what Advice really showed. He was very reserved. There are things that he didn't tell us, obviously. Yeah. But you can tell, you can see his, his emotions, the way he responded to questions. And of course, you know, just hip hop, the sound. Just the sound of the Bronx, the, the yeah, way the Bronx looks. Um, I, I think it was something that we needed to capture because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, I don't want no one to say fraud, you know, and I know here, here, here we're, we all, we're, we're, we're more educated. We understand that it's a versatile um, environment, this yes. borough. Yeah. But of outside of this circle, there is the assumptions. There is these, a picture that people always have. That's right. And and I think like like Dylan like was saying. Like what Dylan was saying, yeah. And and so that's why this was good that we we still identify. Hey, look, we know this is here, mm -hmm. and we're gonna showcase this too. I love the fact that he had his his friends come down. One producer just we want, we're on we're on West Farms. Yeah. And and just showing on raw on the street. There's one dude saying how I was doing work. I was doing I was doing producing. I love that. Yeah. I was like I was like these are people that we're not even covering. Yeah. And there's shit that we don't even figure out. That just, just to tell you like, <laughs> how, much, think, how, how many people deep, are grinding and working how and hustling and like doing stuff. Yeah. You know? it's, Coming it's off serious. of that, we also showcased food. That's which right. I right. think is so <laughs> important for TFAC and for the it's Bronx really... because every single one of us brought a different culture or a different style. Like he went yeah. to a food truck. Uh, you know, we went to a pizzeria. Like those are two yeah. polar opposites. And you're seeing yeah. the people who run the pizzeria making the dough. You're seeing the Everything. guy in the or the girl in the taco truck like serving you in the, the bright face yeah. that they had. Like, yo, I'm being featured right now. Like my business, my my hard work is being featured on something that has nothing to do with food, but now it does. Now it does. And that, right. that to me brings even more camaraderie 
to TFAC and to B-Sides and to the Bronx, like showing that, showcasing, you know, different businesses and different aspects of the Bronx across the borough, you know? You're right, you're right. When it comes to mainstream exposure, I've noticed that the Bronx specifically, and we're talking all around the world, like you guys said, it's just known for being dirty, rundown buildings, uh, crime. rude people, crime, <laughs> yeah. and these things are present everywhere. They're, they're present everywhere, but no one really talks about, unless you're familiar with creative processes or grinding yourself, that there are so many people, so many people that they're very perseverant. They, they grind, they hustle, they do what they have to do to progress uh, themselves. And we're actually known by other creatives around the world for being the most talented yeah. Yeah. when it comes when it comes to when it comes to music as as well um one thing that i've noticed i've seen uh like online classes and interviews with classical composers and they talk about the bronx and how many amazing uh just talented people are That's living right. here but we mostly get you know Bad the Mont the Mont Haven the the uh the one sixty seven steps that yeah. the Joker danced yeah. on you know <laughs> that's, right. that's that's like that's a, that's like the best thing we got. This right scene now. was yeah. outrageous. His yeah. music video yeah. really touched awesome. me. Awesome, amazing video. Looking at himself in the mirror, yeah. I can I can relate to that. We do that on a daily. Seeing basis. Seeing how you interact as an artist with yourself in the mirror and how your that's crowd right. is going to see you is very important. You have to build a brand that's and. Right. It takes a, a specific type of person to be able to stare at yourself in the mirror and jump with the guitar and correct yourself. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot that goes into yeah. it, you know? And this was something- It's day-to-day. It's day. Yeah. yeah. This was a day-to-day -day yeah. for me. Which I, which I love. What I did love about this also that he is another artist that during the pandemic was actually working. Yes. That's right. We, we met so many musicians that just were so uh, mentally locked down. It, it was a straining of, time. And it yeah, was. It was a really tough anyway. time. But I think it, it shows you know, Advice's character for all the work that he that he put in this year, and that's why we thought it would be nice to to feature him. Yeah, that last, I, I that love last this episode. episode. Yeah, but I think Jax is definitely right. I mean, we also, and I think we will work on that this season, trying to get more uh, food, more uh, other type of brands, more culture, more culture yeah. uh, highlight it. It, it because, deserves it. Yeah. I like the fact sense. that we feature rock as well because the Bronx is very notoriously known for hip hop and mm -hmm. rap. And I feel that they yeah. kind of overlook the hard rock bands, mm -hmm. you know, the alternative rock bands, like the artists, the graffiti artists, like they, the graffiti artists, yes, that was the 1980s. But nowadays, like we had, um, what's, what's her name? Oben, I think. Like Maria Oben. Yeah. Like she was Beautiful doing mural work. amazing mural work and nobody looks at that they look at oh you know cope too and all that all the uh richie scene like you know graffiti like there are artists right. that are smaller than that but they make a huge impact That's on right. our scene and it's just awesome to be able to feature you know yeah. certain certain things like that like louise and ernie's pizzeria mm -hmm. like a 60-year business like that was really cool yeah. for me you know i've always told an of this i before i joined tv i had no idea you guys were doing a lot so yeah, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about because you're you're coming right. from Yonkers. You know, yeah, you're, you're Yonkers, like yeah. your family's from yeah. the Bronx. You live in Yonkers. Born and raised in Bronx, but, but you were completely new to this. I, yeah, for me, for me, rock in the Bronx didn't make sense. It was like it was like an <laughs> apple and a banana. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what the UK man like, had a problem like, with. Like, like, <laughs> and then it doesn't be rock. Okay, well, like, all right, well, give me like Lincoln Park, my Shinoda rock. Give me like Limbisky. Okay, I can see that. Yep. You know, there's flow in there, but like. Hardcore punk rock, alternative, that hard pop punk, punk like yellow, like Cal. That's Cali shit. It's like uh, for me, it was really, it was interesting seeing that. Yeah, that scene, and that's what I loved about it because it was different for me. I was telling you last night, like for me, like I didn't really listen to rock like that. I'm, I told you, I'm a classic rock guy. Yep. My father was a classic rock person mm -hmm. in South, and my mother was a Motown person in South. That, that was a connection there. It was so it was classic rock. My metal was Ozzy. Yep. My metal was a Slipknot. Mm -hmm. And I, I I learned that over the years, but joining TFAC, seeing it up front, raw, how it's done, how it's produced, I found a new appreciation for metal. Yeah. 
metal sounds totally better and different when you hear it live than oh, you yeah. hear it on the six. Mm -hmm. And two more. But I can see, I can see the production. I can hear the instruments. It's the I, experience. The experience. The energy. Yeah. Right? And you could feel it. You when feel you feel it. watch said, it live, you can feel it. I said it. when the cameras weren't off, I had the, the, the acoustic. I, I, like, I never liked acoustic. Me either. That was boring. That was slow. Reminding me of Simon and Garfunkel. I like Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, it's like, it's like, that's like, that's in the time and place. But like, then yeah. you sit down, you appreciate, you just get as much whiskey as possible. And you just... And you enjoy it. Oh, and you enjoy it. These are things, these are experiences, exposing myself to music. My mother always says, well, you're not big into rock. You're not, you're more of a hip hop, you're more of an EDM guy, you're a dance guy. Why do you, why do you still do this with, with Fernando? Really? Why? Wow. Yeah. I would not have thought. For her, she said, because, because to me, like, you, you do what you want. I said, Mom, like, look, at the end of the day, you got to start somewhere. You know, you're right. I, I like these things. We're doing those things. We're doing the hip hop. We're doing other stuff. We're doing other genres. Or how many other things? But you got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. My, my start was rock. Yeah. Why not? Why not book rock bands? Why not? Um, uh, produce or manage rock bands. It did. Hey, shoot, there's they're out there. The artists that are working, yeah. and it's something that was new for me, and I and I, I embraced it. I was like, you know, what? this is this is cool. And now it's like you then you go back, you listen to your old playlists, mm -hmm. you realize, you know, you have been listening to this music. Yep. You realize you have been listening. To you then then you find you appreciate what you did like classic the classic yeah. rock. Like wow, like okay now and now it's like I, I'm loving the 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 uh, rock itself. You uh, you mentioned your your father was a big yeah. influence in, in the rock music. Yeah, you know, I know you've told me that he he did pass. Now, what do you think? Like, if he saw what we were doing today, what you were accomplishing, you know, how would you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I think my dad would be he'd be very proud of me. Yeah, uh, seeing where I helped grow T Fat to where it is, I, I think. Our success in this. I know initially he would, say, he would be like, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, why are you doing this? Because yeah. right. like, there are times where sometimes I feel like I just want to like quit my full-time job and do this shit full-time. Speaking there, of which, you there, always are present. There, even there though you're very busy, there he times always shows up. Yeah. But like, and like, you know, what you do for money. It's not going to get you any money. Does it make you any money? Does it do this? I, I can see my dad saying that to me. Oh, yeah, but I can see him also being proud of me. Yeah. You know, I think it was, a, it was an emotional time for me, you know, when, when dad passed away. Mm -hmm. The most time for my family. It was it was difficult. Um, I think in some way I did want to find a new community, uh, a new group of people. I also had a big personal issue with uh, another friend circle prior to joining TFAC, and I think not only looking at it from a business perspective or like internship perspective, I think also I found people that I truly care about. Mm -hmm. I ended up going for a friendship. Sometimes I feel like an outsider. Mm -hmm. I do. I feel that I don't belong sometimes. Mm -hmm. That I'm like <clears throat> out of the circle because you guys all know each other. But I, I'm still there. I still want to learn. I still want to yeah. grow. I still want to be exposed to music that, I, that, that I'm not really big on. That another night we had the, all the metal people in the, at at, uh, at uh, legendary the legendary were all like oh, you know, singing you know, that and system that down. Down. I love the first I love the first one like, that <laughs> Chop first Chop Chop Suey. <laughs> all those are like what are these songs they're like yeah they're like yeah and they're like yeah I'm like I'm like wow this this is cool like this, yeah. this is cool I get used to this you know this is wait nice. up and to this day <laughs> and then, to this day I'm like I'm still like wanting to like learn more and be a part of everything. And I thank you for that. Like, I think you and I, like, you're such a big mentor in my life, Mando. Like, you are for everybody here. Uh, positive impact. And I think that's another thing, too. I think the reason why I've also been here for so long is because there is a, this positivity here. It's, 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 it's the energy. It's infectious. It's a good energy. And you need positive energy now. You have to. You have to. And that's what's going to really help you grow. So I, I, I really, you know, I use that. So, yeah, it, it, it did help, I think, looking back on it, mm -hmm. therapeutically, with dad passing away just about, I know, it was just, it was a year ago. A year prior to when I first met you. He died July, July 2013. Oh, my God. And I met you September 2014. So it was. Uh, yeah. it was I also tough. lost my mom in 2008, and I have to say I agree with him. The, the positivity I've come to you with 
numerous things. I, I really appreciate you as well, and I hope that we're, we're you all, know that. I remember. Um, you and you as well, Chris. Yeah. Very oh, much. Yeah, the yeah, rest of us, Dylan. Us. Yeah, it was just I love you too, man. Yeah. <laughs> But my boys, these are the boys. Yeah, like, there's, I, I, the box like, is, is really close. Yeah, like, we are if, really like, close people. If there are any tough times, you know, like Nando said earlier on, you were you were feeling like giving up, but you had people who had your back and you yeah. pushed through. It's like that with all of us. We all end up having each other one way or another, so that when we're feeling a little low, we 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 have we have those crutches when needed. Yeah. No one likes to admit it. No one really likes to admit like we're tough. We're Bronx. We're Bronx. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Whether it be their day, their week, their month, or year, yeah, um, just having someone to go to, whether it's a conversation or saying, "Hey, I really need just someone to be with me," right, or just vibe out. Yeah, you know, there there have been times where one of us have had a, a rough day and we hang out. It gets better yeah, by the end of the day, no matter better. what the hell it is, no matter what we're covering, what we're talking about, <laughs> we whether good. it's playing video games, watching yeah. a movie, drinking, smoking, whatever. Wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, like it, 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 it ends like up wrestling, bro. Yeah, it, it, ends, yeah. Yeah, it ends up it ends up just being a good time. And then it reminds us like why we're doing this, yes, why we're exactly. here. And it, it, it also makes us realize the decisions that we made earlier on to try to create something for ourselves when it comes to promotion, booking, playing music. It was photography. It was a like good anything. move. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a good move because if we didn't do this, if we didn't make these decisions that kind of um, gave us a reason to be around each other more, maybe it would have never happened. That's true. Yeah. yeah that's true. I think, so, um, okay, well, one more thought. Yeah. 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 T-Fac is a I gang, bro. I was about to bro. do the segue. You, you right. caught me in a segue, Romeo. Sorry. No, it's fine. That's, I'm, 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 messing. I'm messing. I hope that didn't drag too long. Yeah, me too. But I think that we nah, said some really important, important right. stuff. Yeah. Dude, we're making mm -hmm. motherfuckers cry out here. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm trying. I, I, I almost started. Me <laughs> too. I got emotional when Chris was talking because I'm really, I relate to that a lot. Like, yeah. I lost a parent and my dad's in a real slump and being able to come like to, to your house or to speak with any of you guys like on the side, like, you know, we could all really feel emotional in front of each other and not judge. It's not like, oh, you're a basket case or, oh, you're, you're too weak. It's always like, no, homie, I got you. Like, you know, come it's over. Comfort. We're going to watch some wrestling. We'll have yeah. a couple of beers. We'll, we'll go out. Like, that really makes TFAC a family. Yeah. Like, We're allowed to be vulnerable yes. in front of each other. That's, that's what is What is that's the what number? Let me, let me ask you, Fernando. What is the number one rule of the foxhole? Safe space. Safe space. Right. This is a fucking safe, safe space. space. It's true. It I is. Number that. one rule. Yeah. What's I can take my shirt off and run around. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you know this. This is we're, we're getting a little heavy, and um, yeah, I think and we, we're we should get hot too. we're hot. Let's let's get a couple drinks. Let's, let's get some beers. Some beers. 